Recently, I was introduced to a music album called The Anarchy Arias. It's a collaboration between the English National Opera, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and Glenn Matlock, who was in a famous punk band in the 1970s. The songs on the album are the punk, new wave and rock songs that I'd listened to as a teenager, but this time played by a wonderful orchestra and sung by talented opera singers. What isn't there to love about that? Well, in one particular way, I think it misses the mark and misses the point. These songs were brash protests against problems that still exist in our society, and now they suddenly seem tame. In this new setting, even the lyrics just don't have the radical and shocking punch that they had in the 1970s, and much of the power and protest has now been lost. When I was considering what it means to open our hearts to God's love, I was reminded of the Anarchy Arias. For 2,000 years, Christianity has been known as the faith of love. Jesus' teaching on love, not to mention his life of love, has inspired groups and individuals to challenge the status quo, to stand up for those who are oppressed, to speak for those with no voice, and to lay down their lives for those in need. Yes, people like St Francis, William Wilberforce, Corrie ten Boom, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, but also countless other nameless people who lived out the sacrifice that Christian love demands of us. This call on our lives is radical and revolutionary, and it bucks the prevailing individualistic and materialistic worldview in today's world. The reality is, though, that we've probably heard the phrase God is love countless times by now. And it's easy to hear things so often that we just get used to them. The power and inspiration can be drained away, even from the most life-giving and profound messages. Just like the Anarchy Arias, Christian love can become something bland and staid. Worse still, it can become sickly, sweet and saccharine. So this week, let's try and recapture something of the radical and revolutionary thing that is Christian love. Imagine you've never even heard of Jesus. And then someone explains first that the creator of all loves you completely, unconditionally, so much so that he would die for you. That is a huge comfort. And then they go on to explain that because God's love is for all, we're not simply called to put up with one another or like each other when it's convenient, but to love one another. That is a huge challenge. So this week, embrace the comfort. Feel his deep, unwavering love for you. But also embrace the challenge. In whatever way you can, reach out to others in love. Help them in practical ways and reassure them of their ultimate worth. <laughs>